So about four years ago, I dropped a beginner DAC amp video, and I said in that video I'd follow it right up with some very specific examples for the entry level to help get you started, and that never really happened. I just watched it again recently, and aside from the beard being a lot more gray these days, a lot of that info still holds up. So if you're totally clueless about what a DAC amp even is, watch that video first. Today we're gonna check out a selection of what I think represents the best out there for the entry level DAC amp market right now. And by entry level, I mean around the $200 price point. In general, I think you need to spend about $100 on each component, your DAC and your amp, in order to get a meaningful audio experience over something like your motherboard audio, which has honestly gotten kind of good these days especially on higher end boards. In some cases, you can get it done for less than that if you get a combined unit, and we're gonna take a look at one killer unit that gets it done for a lot less than that. For everything that we're looking at today, you're gonna to come away with a unit that can power most headphones that you see people using or hear people talking about. You're probably a regular consumer looking to improve the audio quality of your games and your music. And for you, a $200 investment in a DAC amp is gonna be a one and done. Find one you like, buy it once, and it's probably gonna last you forever. It's not not like something like a GPU where you have to upgrade every couple of years. A good audio solution can last you a lifetime. If you don't fit into that category, it means you're either dangerously close to falling into the financial nightmare of pursuing audio as a hobby, or you already consider yourself an audiophile, in which case this video is probably not for you. It's worth saying too, especially if you're a beginner, that if you're sitting there with like a $40 or $50 pair of headphones, a DAC amp might not be the best use for your money. It's a marriage. You need a decent pair of headphones to hear the difference that a DAC amp makes and you generally need a decent DAC amp to make a decent pair of headphones come to life. Power is not just about volume, it also improves the dynamics in some cases. If you're using a headset where the ends terminate like this, where you have one for your audio and one for your microphone, it is gonna really limit your selection. You're basically looking at the shit Fulla at 109, the shit Hell at 199, or the Mayflower Arc Mark II at 285. Those first two are solid. The Mayflower Arc Mark II doesn't really represent a very good value these days, so I don't really recommend it anymore. You also have the external like gamer style stuff from like Sound Blaster and Epos, and I don't really recommend these anymore either. They're definitely feature pack to get stuff like chat mix and source mixing, but they don't really offer enough power to drive a lot of the headphones out there. And with the Sound Blaster stuff specifically, I get a lot of noise and background hiss on some of their units. On that note, everything I picked for this list today has a dead quiet background. There's no background hiss or noise of any sort, even with really sensitive IEMs. And all this stuff has multiple gain settings. So you don't have to worry about overloading your IEMs, just so I don't have to say that for every one of these. Unless I say otherwise, all these also have RCA outs. These are for your desktop speakers. It's just important to note, these are for powered desktop speakers or monitors or a speaker amp. There's not enough juice inside a headphone amp to drive passive speakers, and generally you can just toggle back and forth between your outputs by plugging or unplugging your headphones. All right, let's get into this list. But first, you know I love working with brands that I actually use in my day to day. So I'm really excited because today's video is sponsored by TubeBuddy. This is a set of analytics and video optimization tools that I've personally used to help my channel earn more for years now. Outside of making banger videos in the first place, how you package those videos, i.e. your title and your thumbnail is super important. That's what gets the click. And the more clicks and views your videos get, the more AdSense money you earn, and it helps to negotiate higher rates when you're working with sponsors. So every time I post a video, I take the title that I've come up with and I feed it to their AI title generator and it's going to give me 10 alternatives, some things that I maybe didn't think of. If I find a couple different versions I like, I can feed that to the A-B tester and it will rotate those day over day and analyze the performance of each one. I can also A-B test thumbnails the same way. So if you've ever seen a thumbnail on my video change day after day, that's why. I'm running analytics testing to see which one's performing better. When it comes time to add search tags for my videos, it will show me a list of top ranked relevant tags from my video, not stuff I came up with. We're talking about actual search terms from YouTube search data. And one of their best tools has always been the ability to make bulk edit changes to video descriptions. If you've ever tried to update a description for three or 400 videos, you know that can take several hours to a full workday. With bulk edit tools, I can get that knocked out in a matter of minutes. And we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much more I don't have time to talk to you about today. You can use code BADSEED30 to save 30% off TubeBuddy. Just click the link in the description to sign up now and big thanks to TubeBuddy for sponsoring today. All right, we're gonna start things off today with something that got sent out from Shit Audio. Some version of their Magni Modi stack has been an entry-level go-to favorite for a long time now. This is actually my very first proper DAC amp setup, and I still have this thing years later. This newest version of the Magni amp is called the Unity, and what makes it different is not just the revised amp technology inside, but the fact that for the first time, you can get an optional internal DAC card 
inside this, which creates a single unit device for 189. Normally a Magni Amp by itself goes for 120 and the Modi DAC to go with it goes for 100 plus 25 for cables. So all in for a full DAC amp stack and cables, you're looking at 275, which is what makes a single unit performer at 189 really interesting. My copy of the Modi is older, but I really can't tell any meaningful difference between the internal DAC card on the Unity and the full on external Modi DAC. It really just comes down to IO. On the Unity, all you're gonna have is RCA in and USB-C in. If you go with the full on external Modi, you're also gonna add coax and optical in as well. The other big advantage to going with this and doing their full stack is that you can implement other shit modules like their Loki EQ module. This does not work with the Unity because there's no way to round trip the signal back into the unit. So it really comes down to a situation where you're trading IO flexibility for cost and form factor. I have had versions of the Magni that color the sound. This one does not. This sounds really transparent to me. The highs here are really clinical. This thing is a power house too. It's the most powerful amp on the list today at 2.5 watts into 32 ohms. This can drive any headphone I own, even the very demanding Sennheiser HD 800S. It's built like a tank too. This thing is all steel. All the switches feel really good, heavy duty, like really industrial. And I gotta say, this is the smoothest volume knob I've had on any Magni I've ever owned. And I've owned most of them. I'm really impressed with this. If you can deal with the lack of inputs on this thing, the power is incredible. And I love the fact that it's in a single unit. This is an easy recommend for a one and done. I don't feel like I hear a lot about JDS Labs these days. They don't seem to get as much coverage in the reviewer circuit as they used to for some reason. Their best known product is probably the Element, which you've probably seen before, and they did send some new stuff out for review. For a long time, their Atom amp was lauded as being the cleanest, most powerful sub $99 headphone amplifier out there. The only criticism it really ever got was the all plastic build, while their closest competition shit was doing aluminum and steel builds. I always really like their interconnect cables too, because they have a wire inside that lets you bend them and they hold their position. This updated version is called the Atom Plus, and this is called a heavy version. It's got an aluminum top plate, which is printable. They did my logo on there for me, and it's got an aluminum knob on the front too. I don't know if they offer this configuration anymore. So a stack from JDS that consists of their Atom Plus amp and their DAC Plus goes for 209, plus an additional 15 if you need cables. It's essentially all the same functionality in IO of a comparable shit stack. The only difference being you do get a 3.5 millimeter aux input here. This version of their stack is not as powerful as the current shit stack though. This tops out at one watt output at 32 ohm. One watt is still a decent amount of juice though. The DT1990 that I have is a little more demanding than most headphones. It sounds great on this thing. The HD800S doesn't sound quite as full. Overall, this sounds a little warmer in the highs to me than the Magni stack, but overall still very clean, very good sound. Downsides for this for me, the switches, like the gain and the input switches just don't feel as robust or high quality as they do over on the shit side. You actually need two full big wall wart power supplies to run this. And the on off switch for the DAC is on an inline rocker switch with the power cable. Now they have recently released a major upgrade to this stack now that's all aluminum. It does away with the rocker power switch. It ups the power output big time along with a ton of internal updates. The price on that stack is 258 without cables or 273 with, which makes it a direct competitor for the shit stack, but it actually pushes the shit out in power output. This more affordable plus stack makes it easier to get into a full stack setup and it's got way more IO than the Magni Unity, but the dual wall wart situation and just the overall build of this makes it a tough recommendation over shit. Next up is the DX3 Pro Plus from Topping. This was sent out by Oppos Audio, it goes for 199. While shit and JDS Labs kind of have a good, better, best feel to their lineup, Topping has a dizzying amount of selections that are really confusing to a newcomer, but this one was a standout for me. On the back, we've got RCA outs, two different coax ins, an optical in, and it's got an antenna because this is the only one on the list today that has Bluetooth in. So when you think about Bluetooth with a DAC amp, it's an input. So that means your phone's gonna connect to it and then you're gonna be able to play that music signal out through your headphones or your speakers. It's not gonna send Bluetooth from your DAC amp to like Bluetooth headphones. It's also the only one on the list today that has a remote. Bluetooth and a remote is crazy at the $200 price point. Oddly, it's also the only one on the list today that has a 3.5 millimeter out for the headphones. That's the small jack. Usually we see the larger quarter inch. The volume dial here is clicky. Really like that. It's got a really small footprint on the desk and it uses a really small wall wart power supply. For power output, this comes in second on the list today at 1.8 watts into 32 ohms. So again, you'll be able to run most of the headphones you'll come across. And I'm usually not one to get into DAC measurements, but this thing sounds clean, like clean, clean. Cleaner than the JDS Plus stack, maybe cleaner than the Magni Unity. 
it's really close. The RCA outs are a little different here. There's no auto select. You can actually choose whether you want speakers or headphones, or you can activate both to have speakers and headphones simultaneously. This comes in both silver and black. The display is really clean, like really industrial looking, like a lot of topping stuff. Only downsides, the case fingerprints, and there's no RCA ends if you need those. That's it. This thing is a monster. Punches way above its price tag. Fio is definitely one of those brands you're gonna stumble onto the minute you start looking at DAC amps or hi-fi. Both these next units were sent out by Apple's Audio. Big thing to them for that. We'll look at the K7 first. This is priced right at $199. This is a step up from the K5 Pro I reviewed a few years back, and this is a really interesting comparison to the DX3 Pro Plus. The big thing with this one is balanced output, and balanced isn't really a beginner thing. Everything we've looked at so far today has what we call single-ended output or regular headphone plug if you're a beginner. Balanced output generally provides more power, but it requires your headphone or your IEM to be designed for that, and it requires a specialized cable that one, can be very expensive, and two, isn't normally included with your headphone. There's no remote here and there's no Bluetooth. You can get a Bluetooth version of this, but it goes for like 249. So that's where it trades feature set blows with the DX3 Pro Plus. In terms of power, it places third on the list today for single ended output with 1.2 watts into 32 ohms. So no slouch, but it delivers two watts at 32 ohms running balanced. This is the first one out of the lineup that really sounded noticeably different to me. It feels like it's tuned for more of a consumer sound. I guess the easiest way to explain it is like the DX3 Pro Plus, all topping stuff really sounds pretty clinical to me, really clean, really stark, almost like you're getting ready to examine your audio. This definitely has like a more fun consumer sound. The bass response is lower, fuller, and the highs sound a little smoother to me. I do personally like the sound of this, but I don't like my source gear to really color my audio because it makes it really difficult to audit different headphones and IEMs. Plus, if you're heavy into gaming, I would probably lean more into that like stark, clean detail of the topping over something like this. The background here still is really quiet. It's just gonna come down more to personal preference. I do have to touch on the RCA outs here because they're dual mode, either preamp or line out. There's a switch on the front that can controls that. The problem is I switched this all the way up to the line out mode and it sent a crazy amount of power to my powered monitors. It damn near blew them. So you have to be really careful with that. I am disappointed with this because the volume knob is the same as it was on the K5 Pro I reviewed years ago. It's really weird. You hardly get any volume at all until you get to like right here. Then you just get really small incremental adjustments in volume all the way through this range. And then when you get to like right here, it just slams the volume. I don't understand why it's designed like this. This does use an inline power brick instead of a wall wart, which I do like. I wouldn't say I'm super impressed with this one. The build quality is okay. The RGB ring around the volume is whatever. The volume knob itself is completely goofy and I don't really care for the chubby form factor. I would really only recommend this if you're curious about exploring balance and you have some really power hungry headphones. I do want to talk about this K11 though, because the price point here is 129 which is pretty crazy, and I love this little flat form factor. Shockingly, this has balanced output as well, which I definitely don't expect to see at this price. It comes in pretty low on the power scale. It's only 520 milliwatts at 32 ohms. That's like half a watt. The balanced power output, though, is pretty legit at 1.4 watts into 32 ohms. So I really wanted to see what this little thing could handle, and surprisingly, it had no trouble at all with the DT1990, the Sennheiser 6XX. It even did pretty good with the pretty demanding planar, like like the Hyphen 4XX, which to this day is still one of my favorite planars. Though the volume knob does have to be around 90, it's still got it done. This does have three gain settings and it comes from the factory set to medium. So if you find it struggling to power a certain set of headphones, you may need to go into the menu and adjust that up to the high setting. All the menus are controlled with just this one knob and a combination of presses. The front display is really clean. The little light up feel on the top is whatever, but some people might like that. I do like the big rubberized base on the bottom. You can run this vertically if you want to. And there's a digital filtering section in here with six different options you can use to experiment with the sound. For IO, there is no RCA ins, you do have RCA out, you've got a coax in, an optical in, and USB-C in, of course, and this does use an inline power brick instead of a wall wart. It sounds good, too. I have heard better, obviously, but for a lot of users, it's gonna sound really similar to a lot of the stuff on this list today. It lacks the power output to be looked at as a serious option from audio files, but if you're the kind of user that's primarily a gamer, you like to listen to music, not critically pick it apart and analyze it, but just enjoy it, you run a lot of IEMs, this is extremely solid for the price point. And the fact that it offers a runway to experiment with balanced, like, wow. If you're someone that can't or just doesn't want to spend $200, this is the one right here. I would take this over the K7 at 200 
they killed it with this thing. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the DAC amp that I use consistently on my gaming desk. This is the Zendac V2 from iFi. It's priced at 189. It's just been a really long time since I've looked at this price segment of the market and I wondered if it still held up. Things I like, it's built really well. It's got a pretty unique aesthetic. The volume knob feels really good. It's got balanced output. It works really great with IEMs and it's got this really nice little true bass button that just adds some DSP bass boost. It's as easy as pressing it on when you need it and pressing it back off when you don't. The funny thing about this is it actually has the lowest power output of anything on the list today. So low in fact that iFi themselves don't even classify this as a DAC amp, they just classify it as a DAC. The single end output's only rated at 230 milliwatts at 32 ohms and even moving to balance only gets you 330 at 32 ohms. The reason why that's so funny is because I literally couldn't remember what the power output was on this thing. I had to look it up for this video. I would have never guessed it was this low because again, I run the DT1990 on this, the 6XX, the 4XX, it handles all those. The volume has to be way up there, like 85, 90%, but still. So it's really meant to be used as part of a stack with the $200 Zencan amp. That makes for a stack that costs nearly $400, and the only thing it really gets you is the ability to not have the volume turned up as high, and it opens up a little bit of airiness in the high end on certain headphones, which, to be fair, it does sound pretty good on the 6XX, but even then, max output is only 1.6 watts at 32 ohms single-ended and 1.89 watts at 64 ohms balanced. As a standalone unit, this is bus-powered, which means you can just power this over the USB. You don't need a power adapter. It's powered with just a basic 5-volt barrel connector that's like a phone charger. iFi will happily sell you an audiophile-grade power adapter for either $69 or $109, depending on which model you go with. I call bullshit. I've been using this for two, three years now. I use it just USB powered. I've used it with this. I've compared the two. I don't get any difference, not in output power, not in sound quality, nothing. Just use a standard modern high-speed USB. You'll be fine. I really just like having a small single unit bus powered option. The only emission here that might bother you is there's no optical in it. I think the big takeaway from this roundup today is that there's just a lot of really exciting stuff going on at the $200 mark in the space. It's surprisingly hard to go wrong here. Just Pick something based on your specific needs, goals, budget, and what's available to you locally. I know, for instance, shit stuff gets a lot more expensive if you're not in the States. Of the stuff we looked at today, I'm probably most excited about the Magni Unity. The fact that you can have that much power output in a DAC camp unit in a footprint that small is pretty incredible. I've always been a fan of the shit aesthetic. If this thing had a bass boost, it would probably be game over for the i5 for me. The DX3 Pro Plus sleek little package, if you're somebody that values functionality, the fact that it has a remote, the fact that it has Bluetooth, serious power output, sounds super clinically clean, that is an easy dub at $200. K7, eh, not too big on that. The Fio K11 at 129, shockingly good at that price point. That is an absolute budget banger. I've got nothing bad to say about that at all. JDS Labs, I love the guys over there. They're fantastic guys. I just don't feel like for the money, it really stacks up to what shit has going on, but I'm not ruling out their new system. I will take a look at it for sure. The iFi, like I said, if the shit had bass boost, it might be game over for the iFi, but the reason I like this is like once you get to the full stack, it's not really entry level anymore, but I can't think of another system where you can buy their DAC and still use it as a DAC amp, and then later you can graduate into having a full stack with complete balanced operation. So. Let me know in the comments what you think about today. Let me know if you think I missed anything. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.